We're at Hansa and the door just buzzed. Look, who do you think recorded here? This is super, super exciting. We live last night at 1 a.m. 1 a.m. And uh, they're buzzing like crazy. Hello everybody, hope you're doing marvellously well. Hey, before we start, we should make this an echo chamber. <laughs> we got four floors, we're on the fourth floor, is that correct? Fourth floor, is right. Of this rather beautiful building mm -hmm. of Hans Studios. Mm -hmm. This is Alex Vender. Hopefully I didn't mess his name up too much, but quite frankly, this is insane how echo it is. It's pretty amazing. Very often used as echo chambers. Also, this one, of course, but uh, in the back we have another staircase. I right. uh, don't know if you already saw this. No, we forgot to use it. We were talking about micing it up last night. Yeah, this this is uh, used very often for so as an echo chamber. So, if you haven't already guessed, we're at Hans' studios uh, and we've been working. And I mean, anybody who follows me knows that I'm the world's biggest Bowie fan. <laughs> well, there's quite a few of us. I'm mm -hmm. sure you are too. Um, and so Hansa was the a studio I used to see in on the back of all my favourite records. Mm -hmm. There's a they call it the Berlin Trilogy, don't they? It's yes. Low, Lodger right. and Heroes. Right. Three of the most incredible albums ever made. Right. And they were made here. Made in this building and Studio Two. Beautiful. Exactly. And Studio Three, um, uh, they recorded a few guitars, but mainly in Studio Two. Mm -hmm. So we decided to come and do a masterclass here and do some recording. And it, plus it's super booth this week as well. Mm -hmm. So it seemed like the perfect example, <laughs> perfect chance I should say. Mm -hmm. So let's go in and check out the studio. It's full yes. of our gear by the way, because we're recording here. So let's have a look. <laughs> so this is our little entrance area. So to sit down, relax, phone, whatever. Studio One? Studio One, yeah. So originally the, the owners um, um, of the studio, um, yeah, they are mainly publishers. So they have, or they had, the, uh, one of the biggest independent publishing companies in Germany. And they um, started um, producing in the 60s, so mid 60s. And uh, then they wanted to have their own studio and built Studio One, Hansa Studio One, originally uh, on a different place in this town. So a few kilometers uh, away from here. And um, then they became more and more record producers and record label and all this business all together and had more and more artists. And then they had uh, to rent different studios to do their productions. And also in this building, they did productions in the early 70s, so before it became Hansa. And um, this building was uh, totally damaged from the Second World War. Just one room, so which was later the Studio 2, was working as a studio from Areola Eurodesk. What was the, what was the building before the war? Oh, it's, uh, it's built in uh, 1912, um, f uh, f um, f paid from the German uh, Craftsmen Association. So oh, they uh, needed their own building for... Like a trade union. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And, um, yeah, and then... Maybe that explains the creativity. Explains yes, in the Second World War it was completely damaged, the building. And a record company called Areola Eurodesk, um, they they uh, found this place downstairs, so the hall was still existing and it had sound and everything. They said, okay, let's uh, put some equipment in here and do records because it were nothing around. Mm -hmm. No buildings, nothing, completely wasteland and very quiet, of course. So the wall was very close, there were no noise, very quiet. And then uh, they had, uh, or they did, um, I think so, classical recordings and a bit um, movie sync things and then the owners 
So the Meisel brothers came here to, to rent this room for recordings. And then they found out, oh, the building is for sale. So At then, a time when property, property was exactly so cheap. Exactly, 74, 75, then they bought the building and uh, uh, spent a lot to build it up and to, to renovate and make all new. And then they put it in uh, five or six recording studios. Amazing. Yeah, it was. And, and what I heard about is that they, that they run around the clock. Right. Around the clock. Unbelievable. Yeah. So uh, yeah, a lot of engineers, assistants, artists came in, came out. And unbelievable. So f f I think it was um, so late 70s and 80s, an unbelievable time for, for uh, producing in this, in this city. Oh, yes, because we... The the electronic music that was coming out of Berlin in the seventies mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. just like mm -hmm. it influenced all of the British new wave bands. Yeah, yeah. And Bowie, obviously, as usual, was first to, to figure that out. <laughs> I don't know exactly why he came here. So I think, um, of course, because of Berlin was an exotic place in this time. Mm -hmm. um, uh, to to stay here and to to get influences from well, the can, people. Well, I imagine I came. I came here in in eighty eight as a mm. teenager, mm. and I I remember just that feeling, especially how you had to get here, mm. where you you know the guards changed on the train, mm. and they went from like nice friendly guards to a bunch of guys coming on like dressed in combat with fatigue with, oh, with yeah. machine guns, checking mm. your like holding up your passport like this, <laughs> really looking at it, and you know making you feel mm. it was very intimidating. But I imagine. Not that I understand entirely the human condition, but mm. I imagine that just creates this kind of like feeling when you're in mm. a city in the middle of uh, another country. Yeah. You know, yeah. and, and, and a, a fairly oppressive regime surrounding you. And so it, it just, I don't know, it blossomed the creativity. You came in here mm. and it just felt incredible. It still does. And in some ways, even more so now because it's so well looked after. When you drive mm. through Berlin like we've been doing the last couple of days, it's so beautiful, mm. so clean. Mm, it is. It's, mm -hmm. you feel like, it, it, yeah, it's, it's mm. amazing. Yeah, so then, uh, yeah, the Meisel brothers bought this building and then they had five or at least six because uh, the, the studio number six at least was in a trainee studio. So they put it in the new gear and then all the assistants and engineers had time to work on the new new gear and to try things. And um, this worked very well till 93. What happened in 93? Uh, it's hard to tell. So when I came here in the beginning of 90s as a musician, I, I did the last um, uh, recordings in this famous Studio 2 where, where the Bowie stuff is recorded. And um, I met you two. Mm -hmm. so, Dude, Arcton Bay. Exactly. So yeah. I, I met him for one, two days and here. It was for people from other countries, at least a cheap place. Also, the U2 guys uh, said on their documentation, oh, it was a cheap studio, great, fine. But for, for um, German budgets, it was too expensive, at least. Oh, well. Yeah. So, I will say it is really well priced. N no. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, of course. It works uh, like, like yeah. it is very, very okay. But um, in the early 90s, no one had the budgets and, and the big studio, too, wasn't affordable for, for this kind right. of productions. Um, uh, they they made in the 90s so everyone had computers then and uh, uh, tried to do records in in the living room at home you know right so what to do with this big place like like old studio too well, maybe it was also a transitional time for berlin you know yeah. the wall had only been down a couple of years it was probably very transitional. Yeah, time. every everyone was looking for for uh, yeah what 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 will the future what yeah. will the future bring at least you know no one no one knew in what direction uh, all this uh, business goes and sure. so this came a bit later today we are feel very sorry about uh, giving up studio two right yeah so since uh, since more than ten years I think about is there any possibility to 
get it back as a recording studio. It's still owned by the same the same. It's it's still owned by the by the family. But it's yeah by the Hansa family. But it's uh, now um, uh, operated by an event company. Mm -hmm. But we still have the possibility to use it as a recording room downstairs. Great. So from time to time, it's. Uh, um, it's uh, used as a drum recording room or for classical recordings and amazing. Yeah, yeah, but uh, I, I wish it uh, um, could be more. Right, <laughs> could be more. No, I understand. Yeah. So talking of blue SSLs. Yeah, yeah. Funny story. So what I heard about and is uh, from from uh, a guy who was the maintenance uh, guy for years so he was employed by the Meisel brothers so the Hansa owners and uh, they had this guy around the clock repairing things and and he was was one of the guys who came up with um, with the uh, news so about oh there's a company in Britain which is, uh, m makes wonderful desks and things and they they uh, they uh, flew over to to uh, where was it in Oxford. the past uh, Oxford exactly, yep. and had a look at these desks and say okay yeah, so we buy we buy three of them. But, wow! But please, <laughs> in those days these desks yeah, were so please. expensive. Yeah, they were. So I I don't know exactly. It's, maybe it's a rumor, but I heard about that. This version, which was a 64 uh, in uh, in the past, now it's a 56 with the few spares on the left side, so they doesn't yep. uh, work at the moment because it's from an uh, from the older desk version. Yeah. So, but this this one as a 64 with uh, two power supplies and the G plus computer were a bit more than uh, one million German marks. Uh, I can believe it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I remember when, the, yeah, when these you could buy a couple of houses. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was exactly. Yeah, and the funny thing was they they ordered three of them, so two bar graph versions and um, an uh, VU version, mm -hmm. and said, yeah, but is it possible to have it in a different color? So we don't like this gray. Sure. You know. <laughs> so then they decided to have it in this uh, Hansa blue, and SSL. Um, uh, had this one in their catalog in this time with the possibility to buy an SSL with Hansa Blue, but no, no one did. No right. one in the world did. Right. Oh, forget it, blue. It looks ugly, you know, they don't want to have the blue. Just these three for Hansa, at least. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, it's expensive uh, to, to, keep, to keep it uh, running. Definitely, but uh, we love it, and for us, it's part of of uh, the studio, part of the history. So there is no let's let's say until now, no need for changing. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. So let's let's put some money in it into into the desk to uh, to keep it running, and everyone who comes uh, to Hansa is uh, kind of impressed. Oh. Interesting desk. Oh, I think it's. It, yeah. I mean, I have. I have a four thousand E as well, so I know yeah. it very well. It's yeah. a wonderful sounding console. Yeah, um, I think so too. I think so too. And you're, you're right. You come in, the first thing is, "Wow, blue SSL." <laughs> <laughs> it's just like. <laughs> I just. Uh, well, I have to give a couple of shout outs because we. The mm. thing about Berlin is there's a lot of incredible companies here, music yeah. companies. Yeah. There's Eve. Yeah. And they basically lent <laughs> us these speakers, mm. um, which have been absolutely beautiful. So we're here with Roland from Eve Audio at Superbooth, and let's just talk a little bit about the speakers that we're using at Hansa. Seeing as you designed them, maybe you can tell us a little bit more about them. Uh, thank you very much. At the Hansa studio, we are using an SE48, uh, and here we have the 48 again. It's a four-channel speaker with, as you can see, uh, four drivers, two woofers, a dedicated mid-range driver, and a tweeter. In this model, you can change the position of the tweeter mid-range plate by rotating this plate. Then you have, can change by yourself whether you want to have a horizontal or a vertical version. Great. And what are the crossover points? Because you've got, uh, um, what's the tweeter handling and where does it cross over yes. for the mid-range? So we have 
we can start with the base. So sure. we have uh, two woofers running parallel in the same frequency range, and the crossover frequency is between two and three hundred hertz to the mid range driver. Then the yeah. mid range driver is um, has a frequency range from yeah three hundred hertz to um, two point four kilohertz, and then right. the uh, tweeter. Handles everything Just above that. Handles the rest. These are wonderful sounding and they do a lot of work. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of work. So from like 2.4 up, that's all being covered from here. Yes, yes. That's, Crazy. That's true. It's an air motion transformer. Yep. And the principle of an air motion transformer is different from a normal woofer. A normal yeah. woofer is you have the voice coil and the voice coil is connected to the uh, diaphragm, the, the silver one. And uh, normally you have a one-to-one -one ratio mm -hmm. between the voice coil and the diaphragm. Right. That's okay for low frequencies, for mid frequencies or higher frequency, yeah. it doesn't work so yeah. well. And the idea was to have a different uh, principle. And here we use a folded diaphragm, and this folded diaphragm is nearly covered completely with aluminium, where the music signal or the current from the music signal goes through. And then in result, you have a folded diaphragm mm -hmm. with uh, the current going up and down located in a magnetic field, and then each fold mm -hmm. or each wall of the fold are moving to each other. Oh, well, it's so, like a concertina. Yes, yes. And you have a, a speed transformation. Um, yeah, it's compar and comparable. Your, your breath goes very slowly, mm -hmm. and your sp air speed can be much higher. So right. that is a, this is a big advantage, that you have more resolution, uh, more resolution uh, in, yep. as a result. And... Um, because the diaphragm is, is nearly covered completely by, by the um, aluminum, you can say the complete diaphragm is the motor. Mm -hmm. In opposite to a normal woofer where you only where only the voice call is a uh, is a motor and the rest of the diaphragm has to follow and right. it is much more difficult to control. So tell me about these control functions on the front yeah. here. Yeah, we have we have just one knob to control all the settings, what is needed in a studio monitor. And mainly uh, settings are needed, uh, volume is, is needed, of course, and um, the um, shelving filters, low shelf, sure. high shelf, and desktop notch. So, and we have here um, the knob, you can adjust the volume just uh, with turning the knob, and you can press a button, and then you enter another uh, menu, and now you can uh, change between different um, shelving settings. So in this case, um, high shelf, then you have a desktop notch and a low shelf. And of course, you also can uh, adjust the brightness of the LEDs if you have a um, yeah, cinema oh, environment, then you can also um, decrease the brightness of uh, the lights. Oh, okay, that's good. In another nice feature, what we have in, in every speaker is, we call it a secure fade in. If you disconnect um, the speakers from the mains, Yep. I switch it off. Of course, the speaker switch is off. So if you lost power, yes. So and and now uh, after when you switch on again, then you see the volume increases slowly. It's a kind of uh, yeah, doesn't it, come off and go. Bah! Yes, yeah, that's, yeah. that's right. And just, uh, Smart. Yeah. I like that. So you can use the main power switch in, in your um, studio and no settings are needed to be stored extra. Uh, extra okay. So no enter button, no software update. It's just a right. um, normal working studio monitor, easy to use. Okay, great. So you can literally power up your speakers from the external power supply. But, uh, yes. You know, yes, yes. So power outlet rather no than having No shutdown procedure, just... And right. also you can you can bring uh, the speakers uh, in a standby mode from the with the front knob. So now yeah. it's uh, in, in a, now it's it's uh, not really a standby. It is not a signal on automatically. Right. And if you want to have it uh, started or on again, then just press a button. And Great. Then I like that. Works. Cool. It's a good idea. Thank you. Thank you very much. There's also uh, Tegela, which is another local company. Yeah. Which have lent us some stuff, and I actually use the the cream there mm. at my own studio. It's mm. amazing. Mm. Uh, another great company. So when I investigate on uh, f Facebook or wherever, you know, all this uh, yep. social media things and uh, looking for, for people like you. So what is this producer doing? What is uh, this mixing engineer doing? You see more and more of these uh, German things there. It's very interesting. Oh, they're amazing. They build, they build them there. We're actually going on Saturday. Mm -hmm. to, to visit them in the morning. Mm -hmm. they, they hand make them there mm -hmm. and then they sell them, sorry, big companies, but they sell them directly. 
Yeah. So they're able to keep the prices down because there's no markup. I mean, it's just there mm. what they would mm. make normally. Mm. I, so. I still never worked with, but I know from many, many people that uh, seems to be very good stuff. I did a shootout mm. uh, between this, the mm. cream, mm. and my a pair of my Poltex mm. and my SSL 4000 bus compressor. Mm. And without giving anything away, that sounded really good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. It was like, because, and I think at that time it was about $1,500. There might, there might be a little bit more because it's a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. But it was about $1,500. Two Poltex and SSL bus compressors, mm -hmm. maybe $8,000, $10,000. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 They're absolutely phenomenal. Cool. And you've got some great outboard here. Um, yeah, it's, it's nice all, to see some all collected over the over the uh, years. <laughs> there's some fun things. I mean, there's the, the, there's some great, obviously German products like the uh, 276s. Yeah, there's the Siemens EQs here. Mm. There's EMT. There's a there's actually two plates here, isn't there? DSs. Oh, the DSs. Exactly. Ah, that's, they've that's got quite the, a. That's the DS version. Mm. Oh yeah, treble reduction. See? Exactly, and very funny knob here. So one is male and two is female. <laughs> oh, <wow>. <laughs> <laughs> it's very funny, but they work really, really, really good. Oh, I want to hear that. We have we have a mic that's quite mm. lispy. It's mm. on the drums. Mm, I might okay. stick it on that. Okay. Nice to see these daking. I actually love this. This is uh, uh, these are really wonderful. Yeah. And then but you got hard to get this version. Very hard to get this version. There's another version which came a bit later. So, but uh, different knobs and, and things, but um, very hard to get this one. I have a rack in this room with a few more. Oh, you do? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, but needs uh, needs a bit uh, maintenance. Oh wow! <laughs> those are those are the ones I I had one of those for a while. Yeah. So th They're this amazing. is how they made them um, originally with yeah. all these rack uh, um, uh, ears. On the sides and also in these little racks. Is that that old patch base? Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this uh, this is um, this is the the old possibility to change between um, the um, tape machines. Ah, I see. So the red uh, the, the red uh, uh, rack is uh, the recording path, and the yeah. blue is the uh, repro path. Nice. Yeah, and then you could uh, you could decide. With a lot of here, you can see the old uh, uh, patch cables. Yeah. From which channel to to what channel, and it's unbelievable. That's fantastic. Yeah. So the old Dolby racks, of course, with the switchable cards, and yeah, this this is uh, this is uh, of course a history room. <laughs> look, there's a Lindrum. <laughs> wow, look at this. <laughs> it is, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, and this is a very funny here. So because I tried to keep this uh, these walls yeah like they w w are from the beginning on yeah so because this guy wrote his own name in there yeah mr eno oh that's that's brian eno that's uh, uh, brian eno exactly <laughs> okay. i'm I, i'm gonna i'm such a kid yeah yeah these guys had fun in here of course yeah a lot of lot of tape machines I've, I've never yeah. seen as many A82 tracks. Yeah, I tell you why. Because uh, I, I try, or we try to, to keep everything from the Hansa studios we had to close down in the 90s. Also, the right. Studio 2, 93, and Studio 3, uh, one year later, I think. And uh, uh, the owners, and, and of course, me, we decided to keep everything. So, two, two A80s, Mark 2s there? There's Mark 2s? Oh, no, Mark 3. three. Yeah, Mark 3. Mm -hmm. So very funny to work with them. So here we have to buy a, a few new rubbers, of course, but they are synchronized, so you can have 48 channels synchronized. Oh, fantastic! Mm -hmm. well, I have I have a Mark II. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I like it. Yeah, I love them. Oh, look at this telephone in here. Yeah, but this I think this one has just one speed. <laughs> That's okay. Mm -hmm. Has one speed, awesome. Yeah, <laughs> but sounds amazing, of course. Yeah. Now, some more outboard here. We'll just. Um, I see you got the Dolby, uh, the Dolby trick there. Yeah, yeah. People love it. So we have a rack with uh, with um, I think more than twenty four of these modules. So change changeable from A to uh, SR and whatever. 
Oh wow! Yeah, because we have um, we have um, an archive downstairs in the mm -hmm. cellar with uh, more than six thousand tapes. Wow! And yeah, from time to time, people call us and ask to um, to copy them, so to digital format, whatever. And a lot of a lot of records are done with Dolby, different Dolbys. A, B, S, R, and so we have still the possibility to change. It's nice, you keep the gear that you can do that. Oh yeah. Now yeah. a lot of uh, a lot of eleven seventy sixes, the eleven seventy eight, the stereo one. Mm. But I tell you the truth, many things are of course lost. So every Hansa studio in the past had at least two. 660 Fairchilds and 1670. So it means these studios had at least around 8 to 10 660s and 4 to 5 670s. Wow. When you say lost, where did they go? They got sold? Um, what I heard, because I'm, uh, I'm uh, too young to, to uh, be part of these old times. Yeah. Right. What I heard is that they were very, very time intensive, so with maintenance and things, and times changed, and they they tried to went more to jury uh, or whatever or tube tags and things, and they were somewhere in the storage, and then they sold, I think. Many the storage. Maybe we should go down there. Uh, there, is, there is no Fairchild left. <laughs> Believe me, we, we, <laughs> we looked in every corner. Oh, yeah. So they had really a lot of amazing outboards. So I, I think it was was the, one of the best equipped studios in the eighties. It's still pretty amazing, and you do have a Ursa Major space station here, which is pretty yeah. pretty awesome. Yeah. That was so that, it's, between that and the blue SSL, that was like the first thing I noticed. I was like, wow. Mm, mm. So this, uh, this uh, space station I found three or four years ago in the cellar. I was in the cellar? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so then, then I asked, some, asked someone to, uh, to uh, recap and repair, and now it's working like oh, fresh from the... <laughs> these are great. Yeah, so I have two of them. Oh, you do? Yeah. You want to sell the other one? No. <laughs> <laughs> Just leave it in the cellar. I'll come by and pick it up later. <laughs> I tell you, I try to keep everything here. Yeah. yeah. But you know how it is. So if you have... Classic this... PCM 70s. Yeah. Well, so we've there got a 480 we... over here as well. And you have a 244, don't you? Yes. So yes. Yes. covered. Yes. Yeah, but be also because of uh, collecting uh, these babies from the studios, we had to close down. Right. So that's why we have a lot of double right. pieces. You know. Also the the eleven seventy sixes. So normally every studio had two, but now we have a few more. Great. Mm. I, I I love this. <laughs> I just love when you walk in and yeah, you're sure. But we think about changing changing it. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's, it, it 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 has such a unique yeah. the way that these are laid out. And there's another one over here. Mm. Mm. Got all the drama gates down here. Mm. I mean, some beautiful AMS stuff. I mean, the Valley Dynamites, those are amazing. Yeah. 545 parametrics. You know that... They're not very often used. I, well, I don't know, know why. You know, that's those that, those have been used on some, some great, great records. Yeah? Yeah, some great stuff. Yeah, so I have four more. Oh, you do? Mm. Like I said, I'll, I'll give you 50 bucks. <laughs> yeah. Also, oh, tube tag. I have one more tube tag, of course. Those are great. Mm. Yeah, really, really great. And all the manlies there are beautiful. Yeah. Let's go and check out the live room. Yeah. For those who are obviously noticing, we've been tracking in here. So yeah. It's, it's a great room. It's it not, is. It doesn't have a super high ceiling, so it's not about like big, loud, mm. but it's about really Mm. Tight drum sounds, like super, super tight drum yeah, sounds. Yeah, the, the, the uh, ceiling of the building is much higher than what we can see, of course. Yeah. Uh, because there is a lot of acoustic elements in the right. ceiling. At, at least modules this high. So that's why it came a bit more down than... The, this, is the, this is the kind of studio, we'll obviously walk through all the rooms, but this is the kind of studio where you feel like you want to camp out. Yeah. Because you've got control room, you know, pretty pretty darn big live room. Um, the fact that it's very well equipped with a Steinway over here. 
There's a small Steinway over here. So it's like yeah. five foot, seven foot. You've got how many uprights? Uh, at the moment, we have two because uh, this one is the, the mother of all the Hammond origins called um, RT3. Right. So the big, the big version of the B3. This is an old. Uh, this is fascinating. Schiedmeier Celesta. It's an oh. orchestra Celesta. So this baby should be around. Now, whether you're a keyboard player, you should be playing this. Yeah, it's from the late 40s. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Yeah, it's a very, very, very nice instrument from the late 40s, we found out. All well, my hairs are standing on end. It's <laughs> the sustain on it is just like so perfect. <laughs> it just makes simple ideas just sound more interesting. Mm -hmm. So a few days ago, um, a young guy who's working with and for us, uh, he's uh, doing the social media for Hansa Studios. Um, he placed a picture on Instagram or Facebook uh, of this uh, piano. Oh. Nothing else, just the stain we be from Hansa. Yeah. So, and I don't know, within minutes, a lot of people started liking and commenting. Exactly, because of who were playing on this baby. I, what's the history? Tell us. Uh, more, more than 100 hits at least, you know. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's from, uh, from the early 70s. Oh, it's beautiful. You should be playing it though. You're a piano player. I just... Yeah, so sometimes. <laughs> I'm a guitarist. <laughs> I'm a guitarist who fakes playing piano. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, you play exceptionally well. Thank you. Yeah, that's oh, yeah. amazing. It's a, a bit too early for, <laughs> for me. <laughs> 9 a.m. piano playing? <laughs> you, need, no, you need to be late at night, a couple of whiskeys? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, the, the, uh, yeah, a lot of, of famous uh, records and songs. Well, was this in Studio 2? Would Bo Bowie yes. have used this? Bowie used it. Oh, okay. um, uh, Dipish Mode used it. <laughs> Yeah, all, all these guys at least. So all, all musicians, they came to Hansa and, and needed or liked to play any piano in their songs, they used this one. That's amazing. Yeah, it's, as a, for me, it's one of the famous uh, pianos in Europe. <laughs> it's one of the most famous pianos in the world. Oh, uh, Maybe. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Maybe. So, so we had fun tracking drums here yesterday. Um, we'll probably, probably do a little bit more today. Yeah. I, I I loved how tight we could baffle it off. Like the, these yeah. baffles. So these, how old are these? There. I don't know exactly. Uh, what I know is that Abbey Road has the same. Ah. Oh. And I've I've uh, been there a few years ago for a production with a German singer and asked them, is there any possibility to get some more of these? Yeah. No chance. Sonar plan. I yeah, could. no chance. I, I, it was impossible to find them anywhere. Okay, well, don't ever sell them. Don't leave them in your, in your cellar because they disappear. Yeah, I, I want to have more of them, of course. <laughs> yeah. yeah, especially these uh, big ones without the screens, you know, without the windows. Audio, oh, audio kinetic. Mm. Oh, oh, they're from the UK, yeah. Yeah, of course. Very heavy. Audio, oh, God, yeah, I know. And you, like. you, uh, you can't destroy them, yeah. Audio kinetics. <laughs> Yeah, I like them very much. Yeah, they're beautiful. Mm. And just. It's very interesting uh, with uh, drum recording in here because um, so, what people do when they come in and try to find the right spot for mm -hmm. drum recording, they go around with the snare or with the yeah. bass drum and, oh, where's, where's the sound? Where's the sound? And it's totally different when you place a drum kit there or in this corner or there. Mm -hmm. We did it in there, window open, and the room mics out here. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Unbelievable punchy. Yeah. Yeah, uh, very well, funny. I ca I came in and mm. I asked the assistant, our wonderful assistant, I yeah. was like, what's the best sounding place? Mm. Mm. And she said, This is my favorite place. This yeah, is where right. it sounds the best. 
Yeah. And I, 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 I've said this many, many times. Like, I remember having my own studio mm -hmm. and producers and engineers coming in and not asking me and just putting it 50% of the time in the worst sounding place and then spending ages struggling. And like, I've never been to this room before. So mm -hmm. I come in, the first thing I say to the assistant is like, where do you record drums? Where's mm -hmm. the best place? So mm -hmm. like, and they suggested either putting it in here or over here. And I was mm -hmm. like, we'll put it over here. Yeah, then, then, yeah, but yeah. then you met uh, the good assistant. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because she really knows about, yeah. Well, I think everybody involved in here, we can feel is very, is very passionate about the place, which mm -hmm. I think is, is wonderful. And yeah, we try to keep it uh, as a, um, yeah, let's say, rock and roll uh, place, you know. Well, that and you got a JC-160. That's the 412 <laughs> version. Yeah. So, look, you know, I, so I, I, I took a photograph of yeah. this yesterday and sent it to Tom Holkenberg, you mm, know, okay. Junkie XL, and he yeah. responded, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think but, he probably bought one. <laughs> yeah, we had to spend a lot of money to uh, for repair, of course. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So they are very, very old. I've so never seen a 160 old. before. Yeah. Very old. Never seen a 160. And then mm. I, lo I love this extension cab. Box <laughs> extension cab. Yeah. It's just like silly things like that. I, mm. I need one. <laughs> mm. We have a guy in Berlin who is a very good repair man for for especially for amps and and cabinets and things, and the the bad thing is we have to wait months to get that's the, the same in LA. There's an amazing guy. Every, yeah, he does everybody. Mm. Yeah, so you can't give it to anyone, you know. So that's why. Okay. We have a, Norik Renson is a guitar repair guy mm. in LA that everybody mm. uses, and mm. you can he can have your guitar for three to six months. Yeah, it's just but yeah, same same thing with our um, specialist for microphones, especially Neumann microphones. We have a guy in next to Berlin it's called Andreas Grosser, so he's uh, world famous mm -hmm. because he's the one who can repair the U47s and all the, the really old mics. Right. The Neumann company is calling him. Right, for the old stuff, yeah, that mm. makes sense. Mm. Yeah. So what you can see here is the original from the late 70s or from 80 when this studio was built. Right. And uh, except the ceiling, we had to repair the, the fabric, so that's new. But funny thing is, this fabric you can see around here on the walls, is the original from the old studio one from the 60s. Oh, wow. Yeah, so they kept it from there <laughs> <laughs> and, and took it over and put it in here. That's very funny. I love this. And there's a huge collection of amps here. Yeah, what what we have in here at the moment is a few. We have a few more, of course, but uh, like I said, uh, repair problems, so there, you know. There's so many baffles because they're from the other rooms as well. Yes, and uh, we still need it. Uh, um, not only for for this studio here, um, we we use it for um, uh, um, the studio or the old studio too. Oh, I see. Yeah, when it's booked as a recording room, then we we put all the gobos down and uh, to make an acoustic downstairs. It's beautiful. Yeah. Also, these stands are from Studio Two, so the, these stands are used by. Oh, these huge stands, yeah. Yes. They're enormous. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I think you can see them on the YouTube uh, videos. and Right. Mm. Fantastic. <laughs> so this is the marble room. Yeah, so we call it marble room because I think it is uh, marble. <laughs> right. So what I know, it's um, uh, Italian marble. Good. And uh, yeah, they they try to to have a bit more like stone acoustic. You know the stone room, as of course in, in in London. Yeah. So it's of course not the same thing, but something uh, like yeah, f especially for drums and sometimes also for for guitar amps to have more reflection. Yeah. So I want to want to do a change uh, in here. So within the next two or three months, already planned mm -hmm. uh, to have a mobile possibility up here with closing down, of uh, closing the ceiling with um, with a thicker fabric. Right. So because many people come here to record drums, and they said, "Oh, all the all the metal is much too loud." 
right. back from the ceiling. So we want to have something which is oh, I see. easy to to uh, cover the ceiling. And you can just pull it back and when you need exactly, it. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's a good idea. So like in the back, so this is original with this. Uh, yeah, it's gorgeous. Yeah, I like it. It's, it's special, but sounds sounds really good. The drums are unique. There is there is nothing uh, uh, similar. Great. And also the snares, all metal, no wood. It's all metal. Unbelievable loud, yeah. deep and punchy. Love it. Great. Well, we're going to hear it later today. Yeah, of course. Why not? Very exciting. And, and his name is uh, Maschhoff. Udo Maschhoff. Mm. Maschhoff. Yeah, very very good guy. He's. Uh, um, doing this for 20 years now, I think. Great. Yeah, very small business, but unbelievable. Charlie Watts bought two snares from him. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah. And they have red drum heads, so I mean, you know, what else can you say? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, because, uh, because uh, this drum is so loud that you have to have, uh, sometimes you have to have these a uh, bit more quiet right. heads, then it's very loud. Wonderful. I show you something just quickly. Hi. This is uh, kind of the same room like upstairs, the control room. Yeah. But now it's my. Uh, oh, this is my, your room. It's my private. Yes. Oh wow. So here I do uh, arrangements and uh, producing and things. This is gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Beautiful. Yeah. And another A80 two track. Oh yeah. Do you do you uh, mix to that? Uh, no, I use it for copying uh, from time to time. So all tapes to digital. Oh wow. Mm. You know this one? Oh yeah, gorgeous. So you got a V76 and that UV300. Beautiful. <laughs> do you use that for vocals? Yeah. 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 So it's a very old uh, Lorenz. So. Stephen will be happy. Look, you have a you have a sweat <laughs> mic. Where is it? Oh yeah, it's funny. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. here it is. Look at this. Let's say it's funny. Shout shout out for Steve to Stephen Slate. <laughs> We're all the way in Berlin, home of Neumann, home of Neumann, and there's a Stephen Slate microphone up here. So that's gorgeous. So, and here are also uh, studios. And uh, who, what, is that uh, um, like a record company that has their own studios or? No, let's say more friends. Uh, right. Yeah, so three, four people, they do different uh, music uh, styles in there. Gorgeous. Yeah, that's the entrance to the hall. Wow. So. There's yeah. two drums in here. Yeah, we did. <laughs> All right, buddy. Buddy, oh, buddy. <laughs> yeah, there is a very famous picture with the with the Depeche Mode guys laying on the stairs. Oh, I know the picture. So that's yeah. done here. Oh wow! Look at this. Yeah. So at the moment, a few craftsmen are working in here because uh, they uh, install an air condition. So this that's room never gorgeous. had an air condition. Yeah, that's it. So I closed down 93. Yeah. And when it was a studio, it looked a bit different. So there were uh, no glass, so just bricks. They closed, oh, okay. closed the windows in the 70s. Don't know why, maybe because of uh, sound isolation or whatever. Right. And here were uh, two booths, uh -huh. drum booth and vocal booth. Um, so 93, so the, some of the Octon baby uh, photos are from here? Yeah, it's done here. Room. Yeah, also the video, it's all, all done here. Oh, gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love yeah. these chandeliers. So were these original to the... Yeah, this oh. one. So these uh, few outside here are new, but this one is original. You can see it on every, every picture over the years. Beautiful ceilings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it sounds a little bit different now. Right. Yeah, because of the windows, I think. Right. Yeah, that's that's one thing, and uh, all the wood. So the parquet is uh, a different. Oh, they redid the parquet floor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was completely damaged. 
but we kept, I don't know, five, six square meters <laughs> from oh, which the original. Is, which, which, which area? Um, the middle. Oh, the middle is yeah, the original? But, yeah, but not here. We have it in the cellar. So we took it out. And oh, I see. Now it's safe. Oh, nice. So one, one day I will put the frame around and then we sell it for a million or I don't know. <laughs> no, I know. No, just joke. No. <laughs> it's gorgeous. So do you, they have events? Uh, people come and perform here? Yeah, today it's, a, it's an event location. So like it was before it became Hansa Studio in the right. 70s. And, but from time to time, uh, people uh, do recordings in here as well. So it's uh, connected with the studio on the ground floor called yeah. Emil Berliner. So yeah. the uh, classical guys. And uh, we have um, mobile multi to go down this staircase yeah. and then you can do recordings in here as well. That's amazing. Mm, it is. But to find out how much that is. Uh, so <laughs> hard to say. It's, it's a bit up to uh, the booking situation right. in here. But we would ask you and they would find out? Yeah, of course. Perfect. Gorgeous. Is there any more, anything else we can see? The staircase is nice. Oh, let's check yeah, out the staircase. Yeah, it is very nice. <laughs> Often used as an um, echo chamber. So oh, this, this, yeah. is, this is the one uh, which goes up to the Hansa Studio One upstairs. Oh, wow. Yeah. I love it. Oh, it's gorgeous. I love this. So sometimes we have uh, these um, um, DPA microphones mm -hmm. on each floor. Wow. Mm. Wish I had something deeper than a hand clap. It's always like, that's the only, <laughs> you know what I mean? You go into a studio and everybody claps their hands. It doesn't prove anything. <laughs> Whoa! Nice. I'll tiny little uh, Sennheiser lapel mics. <laughs> Gorgeous. Uh, Put a drum kit down here, maybe, mic up the top. <laughs> let's try. We talk about having high ceilings, you know. Mm. <laughs> yeah, let's try I love this. These, it's gorgeous. Yeah, it's a very nice, nice room. Very nice room. Yeah, then you can have, um, you can uh, take down the um, sound screens from upstairs. Right. So to have. A few possibilities. Right. Oh, yeah, baffle out. Because... Yeah, but it's very open. Yeah, it's Sounds great. like it is. <laughs> it's interesting you have these two extremes. You've got Studio One, which is super dead, yeah. and then this, which is just like absolutely massive and live. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, there were a camera. Yeah. So that you could see everything which was going on in here in the control room over there. Oh, wow. Hmm? It's great. So this was not connected um, or visually or with the window. Or, right. Or, hmm. So here we're office. I think, let's look out here for a second, guys, so you can get an idea of the scale of this place. Like <laughs> how like these are all these floors of all these different studios in them. So this, uh, this was uh, Studio 3 down there. Well, part of Studio 3 was a very big studio. Yeah. And... Uh, I heard about that they tried to record over three days yeah. this typical line in Heroes with the guitar. Oh, the Ebo? Mm. Yeah. In this studio. In that studio? Mm. <laughs> because they wanted to record in here as well and needed some space to, to try out all the sounds for oh, this wow. line. Hmm? So, Marlene Dietrich. Dietrich. Oh, yeah. So this was the control room. Here were the Neef. All the gear yeah. and the original window. This is, so this is the control room for that library? Exactly. This wow. is the control room. This is a great place to do drums. No more clapping of hands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is gorgeous. Yeah, it is. Yeah, and this is the window where Bowie wrote Heroes. Oh, this is the window so he would look over uh, uh, to the wall? Yes. There were no buildings in the way. Yeah. So and you could see the wall and this uh, watchtower. So it's this direction around 250 meters. Do they have, I saw they kept Checkpoint Charlie, it still exists. Do they have any of yeah. the watchtowers? Uh, yeah, there's one. There is one? Yeah, you can, you can, you can have a look at it. There's one. An original from, I don't know, 
1960, 61. Yeah, of from course, one of yeah. the first, I think. Yeah, yeah, they kept it, so you can visit. Especially not really that long ago, is it? No. no it's not very, really, yeah. No, not really. Not really. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. So yeah, control room here, and this window was here, so... Yeah, yeah I fine. mean, I'd heard all these stories about how you could see the wall from the studio. Well, that's pretty literal. Yeah. 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 So where was, where was the console? Uh, where the bar is? Oh, where he's, where he's sending. So this... Uh, right. Yeah, exactly. So then you could, uh, you could have looked there. Yeah. And behind there were all the machines and gear and things. Patch bay was on this wall, a big one with these typical Siemens uh, jacks. Amazing. It was nice, yeah. And completely covered with, um, with uh, sound uh, things. Panels? Or... Yeah, but very ugly. Acoustic panels. Ugly, <laughs> ugly acoustic yeah, panels. Yeah, the 60, 60 uh, panels with uh, lots of holes in. in the... Sure. Oh, I know this. Yeah. Pegboard. Yeah, okay. Pegboard, mm. yeah. So what you normally use for, for uh, uh, radio stations right. in the past. Where's yeah. that? You got, you, do you have any of that in storage? Mm. <laughs> no. <laughs> We're going to come down and take some of the floor when you're not looking. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, this was, was amazing. And I did um, with a friend of mine, 92, between 92 and 93, the last recordings in here. You did the last recordings? Yeah, with the brother of this, um, this uh, world famous composer of the 99 Red Balloons. So oh, yeah. these guys were two brothers, and, and I'm with one of them I did the last recording. 99 yeah. Luft Balloons. Exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> I remember. This is gorgeous. Is there anywhere else we can go? Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I'm, try I'm trying to milk this as much as possible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have to see some pictures like it looked before. So then I, I, have, I have seen some, but oh, maybe okay. you have mm -hmm. other ones that I haven't seen. Oh, duh, I think so. So, and this was the main entrance. All original from 1912. Oh, this is all from 1912? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's really old. So, so you see that's uh, really damaged. Oh, I see, yeah. Yeah, around 90. So which Iggy albums were done here? Uh, like, like Lust for Life? Exactly. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And these guys work together. Yep. Of course. And, oh, yeah, here it is, the picture. Yep. <laughs> these guys as well. Right. German electric pop. Right. <laughs> Yeah. So that's 99 Yeah, nice, nice place. Oh, here it is, Mr. Bat. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, so that's in there. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, this is how it looked before. So to the street, they had the windows, but on the other side, they were uh, with bricks. Bricks, right. Exactly. And more white covered, and it looks, looks a bit different today. But so I think that's why it changed a little bit. So the, the uh, re reflection time or the reverb time, because there, there are a bit different material on the walls right. than today. Marillion. <laughs> and Supergrass, so this was that in Studio One? Yeah, this was in Studio One. Because that's pretty recent, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. With the, the producer, Nick Loney. Oh, Nick, Nick Loney. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, here you can see the the position of the desk. So here is the window behind the desk, the machines, and these uh, these panels, you know. <laughs> what year was that with Mike Bat? Oh, that's a good question. I would say early 80s. Early 80s. Mm -hmm. right. I wonder what projects it was. Yeah. So I would say because I know this guy, he was the studio manager in this time, Tom Müller. Yeah, this was uh, the most famous part of Hansa House, of course. Right. Studio 2. Yeah. yeah, gorgeous. So one day we will enter back. Say again? <laughs> one day we will enter it back. Yes, exactly. exactly. <laughs> do, do more recordings in there. Yeah. 
Well, it could still be a multi-purpose room. It's just tough because, you know, you've now got that as a bar. You know, how do you take the bar and, uh, uh, you know, put an Eve in there? <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, so I, I thought about many possibilities. So you can have uh, upstairs here a room right. with a window into the hall. Yeah. This, this would be a possibility, of course, yeah. I mean, this could be a live room. Also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. all, you need is, all you need is mic panels. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the doors were double, so I remember. So they had another door on the other side. Oh, I see. Mm. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard every time when I when I go in this room. So many remembering, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how did you end up becoming the studio manager? What was that? Oh, so I started as a musician, ninety one, or oh, nineteen ninety one in here and. Um, then uh, it growed up, arranging, bit producing, engineering, so step by step. And then one day uh, the owner asked me, oh, you are here in here every day anyway, so please take care about the studio. And uh, of course I said yes, because I love it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, it is. It's hard to, hard to keep it like it is so because of, um, of you know, mainly I'm um, studio one upstairs so because of the look so I want to keep it you know so sure. no new things and it's hard when when uh, uh, things uh, break you know then, right oh maintenance uh, try to find someone who is able to repair special things and mm -hmm. oh. mm -hmm. so yeah, now okay. I think about um, uh, buying new power supply for the desk. Yeah, that ah. has a very good new power supply. Atomic? I don't know which one it is, but it's a, it's a, a company from Britain, I think. Oh, it is? I'll yeah, I, it I think so. And they, they uh, build a new SSL power supply for mm. all, all, the, all the old desks. I might have to get one. <laughs> yeah, so ours Mine's is... like this big. <laughs> we have two of them. Ours yeah. is running with two supplies and the bridge in between. Yeah. And that's kind of complicated because they have to have uh, the same uh, heat level and things. And oh, it's every month someone has to has to uh, measure and oh, <laughs> hard. Eighties technology. It is <laughs> <laughs> marvelous. Yeah. Yep. This is very beautiful. Thanks for showing us about. Alex, thank you ever so much. You're that welcome. Really fantastic. Really mm. fantastic. Um, it's really uh, exciting, like growing up on all these records mm. and then actually coming here and being able to work the last few days. So thank you for that as well. I must say this studio is very affordable. I mean, if you're working with a band anywhere in Europe, you should be able to come here, stay in a hotel, Airbnb, and, st and use this incredible facility for probably about the same price as staying in your own country. But you're in Berlin, which is one of the greatest cities in the world. So. It is. And you have the possibility to stay upstairs as well. So, oh, yeah, I need to ask yeah, We that. have uh, three apartments upstairs. So like a hotel room. Really? With shower and... Uh, Why do we not know this? Oh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Next time. Next time, of course. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's very, very comfortable to go upstairs and have a sleep. It's just very, it's a very refreshing atmosphere um, in the mm. studio, but in mm. Berlin in general, it's very like mm. positive and mm. um, anybody, people who haven't been to Berlin, I would say it is one of the cleanest cities I've ever been to in my life. Oh yeah, I think so too. No trash, no litter anywhere. Mm. Yeah, I think so too. I think people have a lot of pride here, which I love. Yeah, people take care about the city. I like it very much and it's, it's so green. Mm -hmm. So where I live, it's a bit, uh, bit more outside from Berlin. So lakes and trees, and it's like holiday. Gorgeous. So, but also in the city, it's very green. I love, love it. Love it. Wonderful. Mm. Well, thanks again. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Please leave any, leave any comments and questions below. Thanks for watching the video, and have a marvelous time recording and mixing.